everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rosie and I am a research assistant at the University of Cambridge. Take my hand and hold it tight. So over the years I have seen a lot of personal statements, whether they were my own or other people's that I'd volunteered to check. I've seen many. I have experience writing both an undergraduate and postgraduate personal statement myself. I've also attended workshops and talks on what Oxbridge for example are looking for in personal statements so I just thought I would share with you some last minute quick fixes to help boost your personal statement. This isn't going to be a full rundown of everything to include in a personal statement. I have quite a few other videos with that in it so I'll link the playlist for my personal statement videos in the description. This one is very much if you've already written it make sure you have all of these things. Number one, are you showing or are you simply telling? This is really important. Are you physically providing evidence that you are enthusiastic about a subject or are you just saying you're enthusiastic about a subject because when you show and you provide evidence that carries a lot more weight to see if you genuinely do want to and will be a good fit on the course you're applying for. So an example of just telling would be I am really passionate about history and I love the Romans or I am very passionate about maths and I'm interested in algebra. I don't know anything about maths. If you wanted to change that into an actual show statement instead of a tell statement, you're gonna wanna change it to something like this. In my spare time, I've undertaken an online course about Roman archeology, span which gave me an insight into studying history at a higher level. I've since read accompanying literature on Roman architecture, developing my research skills. I think you can see the difference there. So one simply states your interest, and one implies your interest by showing what you've done about it already. So what I want you to do now is go through your personal statement with two colours, highlighting everything that's just telling in one colour and everything that's showing in another colour, and make sure that at least the majority of it is in the show colour, if not all. Because if you have any empty tell statements, you may as well get rid of that line because it isn't actually adding anything and it's just wasting things off your word count. Number two, have you named a book, article, academic or talk. Simply writing one or two sentences about an article you've read, a book you've read, you do not have to have read the whole book, even just a chapter, even just the introduction, or even a talk you've watched. This could have been at a university open day where you had a little taster session, but remember that academic's name, remember some of the things that they were saying, and work it into your statement. One or two sentences, nothing more. Even talking about something you've seen on a documentary on TV can be enough to show that you are capable of engaging with source material. Just try and make sure that whoever it is you're watching on TV is kind of credible and known within the academic field. Show that you can engage insightfully and with maturity the source material that you're probably going to then be doing again when you're at uni because this is a key skill that those academics are going to be looking out for that you're able to do and that they can nurture. You're not meant to be perfect at it, but at least show that you can try. So on the screen now is a little example of where I've tried to do this. This wasn't in my personal statement, this is for now, just for this video. In 2021, I attended a talk on the analysis of fibres by Professor Jones at University of York. That's not a real person, just to clarify. I was particularly interested in how this could be applied to archaeology, for example, how ancient fibres may have proteins tested to reveal the animal or plant they came from in the past. I've since started reading Bioarchaeology by Boekstra and Beck to learn more about how biological methods can inform us about how ancient people lived. It is quite a few words, it's quite a few characters, but it really shows that you have, one, taken an interest in the subject, two, acted on that interest and three, engaged with source material and moved on to find even more source material. These are the basis of research skills and show your enthusiasm for the subject. Number three, I feel like I'm a brownie guide right now. <laughs> Have you followed the 80-20 rule? Only 20% of your personal statement should be extracurricular activities. And I'm not talking about reading or extra courses you've done in your chosen subject, that's super curricular. By extracurricular, I mean Duke of Edinburgh where you've done nothing related to your course or NCS if that still happens. <laughs> you can include it by all means, but you need to make sure 
that whatever skill you say you've learned from it is applicable to your university course or what you will be doing in your university career. For example, do not write, during sick form, I have done Duke of Edinburgh. How you can say this without it being a completely empty sentence. During sixth form, I have been completing my Duke of Edinburgh's award alongside both my studies and a part-time job, which has demonstrated my ability to handle responsibility, independently manage my time and prioritise tasks. You see what I did there? There also isn't a set place where you should put in these extracurriculars, but from all the ones I've read, the ones I've written as well, this sort of goes as an ending, closing paragraph, which rounds you up in terms of you've seen how good I am academically and how I'm going to perform on this course here's a last minute quick fire paragraph showing you that I'm actually a good person with skills that I can apply to the course maybe I can play for the university's football team finished and you're done so the 80% should be academic and super curricular but don't just rehash your UCAS form because the university gets the UCAS form they know what A levels you've done what you should be doing instead is picking out things that you've learned that you can apply to the university course, picking out favourite topics, books that were particularly interesting that you've read, theories that maybe you didn't fully expand at A-level but now you think, I think that would be a great place to do more research at university. Have a play around with the things you really enjoyed because that way it shows a lot more engagement with the subject material and enthusiasm for the subjects in general than it does if you just rehash I learnt about this. Number four, does your statement flow? This is probably the hardest part actually about writing a UCAS statement because because the space is so small <laughs> and you just want everything in it and it can be really hard to then make sure that it is actually succinct and flows in a logical order. So some quick checks for you to do for your structure is one, have you mentioned things more than once by accident? so that it looks a bit higgledy-piggledy. Two are similar and related things next to each other, or are they one at the beginning and one at the end? And finally, does each paragraph move logically into the next? So I'm gonna put some screenshots of my master's personal statement on here. There, there was more words available on my master's personal statement, but just as a general kind of rule, this applies to essay writing as well. If you can match the last line of one paragraph to the first line of the next, they're gonna flow considerably better. And if you have the words, try and apply that to your personal statement too. Now finally, number five, is your spelling and grammar correct? It is such an injustice to yourself to spend hours writing a personal statement to then not properly check your spelling and grammar. It might seem obvious, but this is the easiest fix of them all. When you've put so much effort into something, you don't want the university to then get sidetracked by the fact that you keep spelling the same word wrong. Don't do yourself that disservice. Get someone else to check it. If you have Grammarly, use Grammarly. I don't use Grammarly because you have to pay for it. The spell check on Google Docs is pretty good as well. And just share it around, get other people to check your spellings. If a word doesn't look right, ask someone else's opinion. Don't be afraid to ask your teacher, ask a friend, ask your parents, guardians, whoever it is that you trust to look at your statement, to simply look at spelling and grammar. And with that, I wish you all the best of luck with your applications. Whatever it is you're applying for, let me know in the comments if you're comfortable sharing, because I would love to know. Equally, if you have any other quick fix tips that could help some other people out here, please do share them, and I will see you in my next video. I hope that was helpful. Bye guys.